hopefully my neighbors getting their house painted right now isn't too loud and i don't know how much it'll get picked up but just had to restart the live stream i wanted to share with you a question i got asked which is like what's the one most important thing when it comes to game and i thought about this i thought about this for a while and it's something i haven't really heard anyone else talk about teach really get in depth even in a lot of the seminars and conferences and stuff i went to and if i had to pick one thing i would say it's calibration so what is calibration so you can google the definition you can look it up yourself but really when it comes to it like when we're out in real life you're out trying to do cold approaches you're out at a bar you're at a club you're at a bar uh, a lounge a wine bar like all those places have different energies and so when you go into those places you want to think about it like what's the baseline energy with at the place i'm at so a, a club where girls are walking around in little booty shorts with like test tubes and people are doing like colored shots that's a different level of energy than like a wine bar or a cigar bar or a beer garden kind of place right so a you want to go to all the different types of places because when you're trying to get over your fear of approaching you want to have it's like a batting cage you want to have lots of practice lots of reps doing it so when you're trying to get over social anxiety that's that's a key and you don't really want to go to the places that you just feel comfortable with like you want to you want to grow step out of your comfort zone which by definition is going to be uncomfortable and you want to grow and then get good at those places and then later decide hey i don't like those places like i'm not going to have a good relationship with someone or past tense i'll never would have had a good never would have had a good relationship with someone who i met at a club because i'm not a club guy like that's not something i enjoy so if you meet someone there and they're into that and that they're really in, just like going to raves and stuff if they're really about that and going to those places like we're not going to really connect because that's that's a big part of their life and i want like nothing to do with it so just like if some chick is into like vegan cooking like i'm not going to vegan cooking classes to meet someone because we're not going to get along so with that said we're just cold approaching you're just trying to get over your social anxiety so going out to those places really good highly recommend it but you got to calibrate so what i what i teach students is you macro calibrate to your environment and then you micro calibrate to the person or people you were talking to and I, I i was really thinking about this too i was like why did i why did this click so fast for me when i got into pickup and i was thinking about previous jobs and experiences like i was a waiter for years and so anyone who's ever been a waiter or worked in the service industry you know there's certain customers you go up to and you're like hey welcome how's it going blah 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 here's our specials do you want anything and they're just like short with you they go nope i'm good i want this i want this to drink and that's it and they fold the menu and hand it to you and you're like oh okay that's that's their energy and then later you come by and ask them if they want to refill or something they don't really look up and they're like no no I, i'm good thank you and you're like okay cool maybe i'll come by one more time later and go hey just check in want to make sure you're still good with that with that drink you don't need a refill yet and i even say it that way just to like make sure they know that like i know they don't really want me around too much so that was one thing and then the other uh, example and analogy i use is I, I started working at a gun range when i was 19 years old so working at the gun range and gun sales training all that stuff i did but at the gun retail counter there would be different customers that would come in and so some guy comes in he's mr tactical well we're going to be having a different conversation than a woman who doesn't really want to buy a gun who isn't happy about having to do this and is kind of scared about it but she's buying a firearm because she needs to because something bad's going on in her life so that's like a totally different person conversation all that we're in a tactical gun shop so i macro calibrate to that environment but the person i'm talking to tactical dude or a cop who's buying like a backup gun or something and then uh, a single mom who's got an abusive boyfriend who's buying a gun as a last resort because she's been abused. Like those are different conversations, different reasons they're in there, different things they're looking for. They both want to buy. And so being able to calibrate to that, 
I think that's what made me like, I was the number one salesman when I was there and I became the sales manager and then later the director of training. And, uh, that, that was part of it is like just figuring that same thing with knives. Someone's looking for like a $500 knife or a $10 cheapy knife or something in the middle. What are they using it for? And I got good at like asking leading questions just to kind of cut through the fat. And so I had all those skills and a lot of you guys might already have those skills. A lot of students, a lot of one-on-ones like they, they already do from work, working in some of the guys like medical, legal, like high level stuff. Again, because your brain's hardwired a certain way that helps you excel in that area. High IQ kind of help hurt you when it comes to like EQ or what I started calling like even like social uh, intelligence. So like SQ, but emotional intelligence, social intelligence, uh, intelligent quotient. So the guys who already do this, like you just got to flip the switch and make sure you start applying it to talking to women. And that was like one of the biggest breakthroughs I had was when I read the game and figured out this is something I could get better at. Like, oh, wait, I already have these skills in other areas. Let me just kind of transfer them and wedge them into this area. And then almost like grafting a tree in my mind, it was like the claw grabbing those memory files and cramming them in here and making them fit. And then they slowly started like growing and then calibrated to that. So macro micro calibrating, if I'm going to a bar this has happened and i'm talking to people and their brother and sister am i gonna have the same conversation i would if it was a girl's birthday party and there was like five or six girls or eight girls like in a group like they're gonna be higher energy the brother and sister it's gonna be a different way of talking to them um, someone you're talking to in the group, if there's a couple over on this side of the table, another couple here, and then like one girl by herself, well, now it's a different energy. It's a different conversation. If you're talking to just one woman and she's looking to have fun that night, I don't want to get too much into this stuff on YouTube. Um, maybe later, I don't know if I'll really do it on rumble, but like, this is the stuff I get into on the discord group on the, the weekly calls where it's, um, more private and won't get me banned off YouTube. But if you're looking to uh, just to have fun, she might be all about that and wanting to that night. So if you don't calibrate to that, then you're going to miss out because that's what she's interested in. So macro and then micro calibrating. And then once you do that, you can start like steering the, the, the energy, the leading the conversation, leading the way it goes. Um, when you're interacting with them. And that's that's where the magic happens. So you got to understand like what you're dealing with, calibrate, get on that same wavelength. You don't want to go super high spaz energy. Like let's say we're back at the club. Like if that energy is here, I don't want to be like up here because I'm going to be like a crazy cokehead kind of guy. But like at the club, like right around here is where I want to be. But if I go to like a wine bar, that energy is a lot lower. I can't be here like a club zone. I got to be down here, I got to match it. So in my mind, when, when I'm explaining this to people, some, some of the, the reactions I get back from students are like, Oh, I feel like I'm being fake. I'm not being myself. And again, that's just a limiting belief, but like we, everyone does this. Like when you're hanging out with your friends, you don't act the same way you do when you're at work. And if you do, like, let's say you work in an environment like that, well, you don't act the same way when you're hanging out with your parents or your grandparents or your nieces and nephews or your kids or your friend's kids, like you shift gears, right? So I'm still the same car. I just have different gears. And so sometimes I'm in reverse going backwards. That's the total opposite of going forward, but it's the same car. It's the same transmission. I just shifted gears. So in my mind, that's how it is. Like if I'm in a club. I got to kick it into a higher gear. I'm in a chill, low key place. I got to downshift and, and be there, but I'm still me. So I'm just, like I said, calibrating. And you want to develop that skill because you might get drugged to some of those places. Um, you might have to go to a friend's birthday or whatever, and all of a sudden you're in that environment. And if you're not comfortable there, it's going to be painfully obvious. You're not going to have fun. You're going to be the Debbie Downer. So just that alone, you want to be able to, to not even necessarily thrive, but just vibe in those kind of places. So when I started going out, like basically anytime I was invited anywhere, I would say yes. Goth Club, that's one of the other live streams I did. Sure, let's go. 
Um, some people want to go to a lesbian bar or something like that. Ah, let's go. Totally not my style. Uh, but I was like, let me, let me just make sure that I can hang wherever I, I need to go. So that's, that's in, uh, more in depth with that. And I want to get into something I, I, I noticed also with this stuff is like other instructors, high level instructors, well-known guys, they don't really teach this. And so what I saw them teaching was like, oh, I nag a girl and then I nag it too far. So I have a routine and I nag her and it goes too far and then she gets her feelings hurt. So then I have another routine to do damage control and kind of bring her back. And I remember when I, when I heard that, I was like, that's, that's crazy to me. Like, why don't you just not be a dick? And that's calibration. Like, why would you just not pick up the energy and, and I, I could I could already see the argument. Well, I'm being me. I'm being who I am. Yeah, I get that. But that's not how the world works. And I don't get to just be me in fifth gear all the time. And now if, if, it's not, if you don't like it, it's your problem. No, we gotta you gotta fit in. Sometimes you gotta go to your girlfriend's. Oh, that was one I did. Uh, girlfriend's work Christmas party, and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, this is not. And it was at a place and with people that are not my style. But I got to fit in. It's part of the deal. So I had to. And I thrive there. So I remember when guys would, like I said, they would have the routines to do damage control and they went too far. And I was like, well, why wouldn't you just not go that far? Like, why are you not seeing what's going on and then calibrating accordingly and like turning it down, turning down the volume or shifting gears if you need to? And they didn't. And I, I remember asking that and they didn't have an answer. Oh, this this works. This is this is how I do it. It works. It's been working. Oh, it's been working for X amount of years. Like, what's what's the deal? Which, to me, that's that's like good is the enemy of great, and also like success isn't proof of a good plan. Like, okay, it's worked, but it's also not worked because I've seen it not work. Um, but it's worked these other times, and so then then when you stop trying to get better and level up, so I I really didn't like that, and I that's something I tracked and. Yeah, it never made sense to me because like I when you're when you're leveling up in this stuff, you want to be like a social chameleon where I can blend in, I can go to these different places and fit in. And then it's truly up to you where you want to go later and enjoy life and meet people and have fun. Because now it's a true option and choice for you. So you could be picky when you have choices. But if you don't have the choice, if you don't have the option because you can't make it happen there then you're stuck. And so that's not a true choice. So that was another thing is I wanted that, that freedom to make the choices and almost everything I choose now is like similar to what it was before, but there's some, there's some differences. But the other thing is, like I said, just the skill, the confidence that came from that competence is priceless. So one other thing I just wanted to touch upon, maybe I'll do this more in a video later is the three ways of dealing with resistance or friction. This is an example of it, which is like force on force. I, I blog about this more. It's on the website. You can see it. The second is redirecting. The three is third is preemptive. And so this is that example of the highest level, like force on force. So you're out talking to a girl. This, I, this happened once in front of me. It was hilarious, but it was horrible. It didn't go well. So I think it was a, a guy from the forum. I don't think he was officially a student. Maybe he was. It's been a long time. But we're talking to some girls and there's a big girl in the group and she's not very friendly. And before I even have a chance to kind of win her over, she says to him, she's like, well, I don't like you. You're cocky. And he goes, well, I don't like you. You're fat. And like, that's hilarious to me, but wasn't funny to her. Wasn't funny to her friends. And they're all shocked and horrified and think the guy's a dick. And they all turn around and leave. So you won the battle, but lost the war. Well, right there, not the right move, right? So redirecting it. So later I was like, how can we make this better? What can we do? Cause I get that line a lot. I used to get that line a lot about, Oh, you're really cocky. So I was like, now I'll be ready for it when it happens next time. Like when some girl says, Oh, you're really cocky. And I came up with all these ways of, of dealing with it. But the simple fast one was, um, so this girl goes, Oh, you're really cocky. I was like, Whoa, I'm not cocky. I'm confident. There's a big difference. Then she goes, well, what's the difference? And then I, I use the Kid Rock song. And I'm like, well, it's not cocky if it's true. She's like, oh, okay. And now I'm redirecting it. So that worked well. 
But then I, I realized later, like, oh, hey, maybe I should just stop coming off so cocky, right? Maybe I should just preemptively put that out before, uh, put that fire out before it starts. And so that's an example of calibration. Like sometimes I'm talking to someone and they're not going to think I'm cocky when I'm, when I'm bringing the heat. I could talk to someone else. And if I mention like one thing, they could think I'm being cocky. Like if I have one DHV spike, they could think I'm being cocky. And so that's the calibration is realizing like who I'm talking to, what, what, what vibe, what energy, what wavelength are they on? And how do you figure that out by asking questions and observing, which gets into the three perspectives. Number one, I got to look and see actually what's, what's in front of me and, and observe with my own eyes. So when I'm talking to her, does she look like she's having fun? How is she dressed? How is she responding? What's the energy? Is she enthusiastic in those responses? And all those things like are just so much, that's so much information if you know how to read it. And it gets to the point where you're almost psychic. Like where I've talked to girls, I actually really creeped a girl out once because I told her, I was like, you look like you drive a hybrid car. It just met her, just talking to her friends, turned to her. I'm like, you look like you drive a hybrid. She's like, I, and this is years ago when very few people had them. And she was like, I do. And I was like, is it like a Toyota, whichever Honda, whichever one, the CRT, whatever that was. And she's like, oh my God, that's what I have. And I go, is it, I bet it's red. And she was like, okay, now you're creeping me out. So anyways, I, I, I guess too well, too many times. And that's just cold reading. Like you could, you could figure it out. Like if you look at me, what kind of motorcycle, this is the thing I do with students. Like what kind of motorcycle do you think I used to own? Do you think I had like a, a, a Vespa moped? Do you think I had like a mini bike? Do you think I had a dirt bike? Do you think I had a crotch rocket? Or do you think I had more like a Harley style cruiser? Like it's not, you see a biker guy walking by dressed like a biker. You already have an image in your head. Is it a crotch rocket biker or is it a Harley biker, right? So you could probably guess. So it's not, it's nothing woo-woo. It's nothing weird. To me, it's like perfectly logical right in front of you, like what you can see. But most guys won't see that. And so you're talking, this happened during a one-on-one -on -one at the mall. The girl's wearing like a little Sanskrit yoga symbol, the namaste, whatever symbol. The guy's talking to her and we we're even specifically talking about that kind of DHV conversations earlier. And then he didn't bring any of that up. I saw the necklace. I mentioned yoga because I helped start a yoga studio with a buddy years ago. And she lit up. She exploded. She got all into it. And then later, he's like, how did you know to bring that up? I'm like, well, did you see her necklace? He's like, oh, I didn't even see it. So it's the same thing when guys will spend a long time talking to a girl and she's like wearing a wedding ring. and he, They don't even realize it. So that's all part of calibration is like looking, observing, seeing what's in front of you and using that information as, as, as wisely as best you can. And the last part of this, if anyone's here, I see there's a handful of guys here. If you guys have any, any questions about anything, type away in the chat. Happy to help. This is my first lunchtime uh, live stream I've done. I'll probably be doing these in the, in, for in the future for a little bit. And also, I was in my A for like two weeks. I was sick off my ass. I was sick before, and then I got sick again. And I guess that's the way it goes now, having a kid. But the thing with all this stuff, it's really important just to, like, it never gets easier. So all this stuff never gets easier. Same thing with weightlifting. Like 200 pounds on the on the bar is still 200 pounds on the bar. That never gets lighter. That never gets easier. But when you do this stuff and you practice it and you do it well, you learn, you level up, you grow, you get better. So then the bar and the weight feels easier because it's you. And so that's like one of the biggest, biggest lessons too, is guys will, oh, it's so easy for you, Bravo, you can do this. But like, you guys don't know all the shit I went through for all the years and all those nights I went out with my wingman three or four nights a week. We had no one to help us. Like, you guys have no clue all that stuff that we went through. Everyone just kind of looks at this later. Oh, it's so easy for you. I remember Neil even said that to me when we went to this um, this little seminar that, that they were doing before they launched the whole company where he got hired is he looked at me he's like oh well it's real easy for you because you're a good looking guy and blah 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 and i was like first off i didn't think i was a good looking guy i still don't but i don't think i'm that bad i don't think i'm good looking but I'm not a fucking male model or anything and i already said that and i was like 
wait, he I'm getting that now. Like someone's giving me that line of, oh, it's easy for you because you're a good looking guy. And I was like, I wasn't always like this. So I had to show him some of my before pictures, which I think are still on the blog. There might be a blog post of that, like me with a Ferengi at the Star Trek uh, experience in Vegas. I'm like standing next to it, pointing at it. And I'd gone there with my ex-wife. So, uh, yeah, that's right. I was like, this is what I used to look like in some of the pictures of me doing tactical training. And so he actually asked later, he's like, oh, can we get some of those pictures to show like your transformation? And that was part of like what happened when I got hired. But I, I, like people didn't know me back then. Like he just saw me already as Bravo and I was already like doing really well. So even that happened with him where he didn't like see the before. So like I said, it never gets easier. You get better. And eventually if you guys keep doing this, you get so good at it that it's just like the people who work out and go CrossFit and all that. Like they're beasts. They lift tons of weight and then they have fun doing it. And then if you don't do it for a little bit, you, you feel like something's wrong because I'm like, oh, I'm not I'm not exercising like me with tactical training, martial arts. Oh, I'm not training. I'm, I miss it. I got to get back out there and do something. So it gets to that point. But you got to you got to work up to that. And I'll tell you, like once you get to that point, it's so worth it. It's so awesome. Like it just it became priceless. Like you, you go from depressed, a lot of students, depressed, suicidal, all that stuff, broken hearted, lonely. You go from that to abundance. And then when I want to be single, I was single. And when I didn't want to be single, I wasn't single. And being able to have that control of your life, priceless. So all that anxiety, all that depression, all that sadness, everything is gone because it's not in your life anymore. And now you got this area of your life completely mastered and figured out. And then it becomes fun. So I was already married before I got I read the game. So like that, that's what I wanted i wanted to get get out of all this stuff i didn't want to date and play the field and all that like i got married when i was 23 so then getting married having fun all that stuff and then it turned into the girlfriend application which is one of my favorite lines from online dating is girlfriend applications like i'm looking for a girlfriend and then you just have lots of fun while you're looking and anyone that's awesome you give them a shot and you're basically it's almost like hiring someone for your company like vice president of your company. It's like, you don't just give that position to the first person you meet. Tons of guys do crazy, bad tactics. Like I got to go through a lot of resumes to find someone that I want to be like my VP. Right. So same thing here. Like this is going to be the most important job in the world. It's going to be the mother to my child. So I got to go through a lot of resumes. So it's kind of that mindset. Like I said earlier, you can be picky when you have choices, lots of students, as soon as they get a girlfriend, first girlfriend after a one-on-one, tons of guys get married. And then a handful of years later, they reach back out to me. So just had another guy do that. Good topic, bro. Definitely good. Being able to adjust and be a chameleon, like you said. Good comparison, just like running. Being able to run fast and train, it takes, it's always hard. Running's a great one. So a mile is still a mile. That actually might be a better one than the weight. Because a mile is still a mile. Or if you're in one of the weird places, a kilometer is still a kilometer. And you got to run it. And when I was running, that sucked. I think I ran like a block for the first time and then had to stop. And then each time I would run afterwards, I'd get like one more house, another house before I'd stop. And then it only took like two weeks till all of a sudden I did like a half mile straight. And then I did that a couple of times. And then I was like, all right, let's see how far I can go. And then I'm jogging. And then I was able to do a mile. And then very quickly, I think I got up to three, four miles of straight jogging, which blew me away because I had never even tried to get that far. So Good, good, uh, good example. So calibration, I think I covered it. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Any questions about anything? Happy to answer it. Otherwise, this is uh, my first lunch live stream. And I wanted to see how it went during the day and the lighting and all that stuff. I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, I think I'm going to be doing this lunchtime, daytime, a little more often in the future and uh it helps when the in-laws are here helping out with babysitting so i'll hang out for another second in case there's anything it says there's a handful of people here so ask away happy to answer i don't know if you guys are at work right now lunch break i was looking at youtube analytics and definitely it's it's mostly guys 99.9 percent of guys that are that are coming here watching these and around my age most of them um, I'm 43, 
three now, but like thirties to forties are most of the guys. Um, some younger, handful older, which the oldest guy I've ever coached is a. Uh, he can be a great grandfather. He got divorced in his like late seventies. He's like, how do I how do I start dating again? I was like, ooh, well, here's what I would do, and then I was helping him out. So, uh, I, and I've coached guys who are 18, literally 18 years old, had his birthday and flew out from Norway for a one-on-one. -on -one. So, whole spectrum. All right, I don't think there's any more questions, so I'm going to bounce, guys. Hope this helped. Hope this is something that uh, you'll you'll take and start thinking about. And you don't have you don't have to go out six seven nights a week. This is stuff you can start thinking about and just applying to life. Like every conversation, I already talked about it. When you're dealing with family members, the holidays are coming up. Like just start thinking about it. Like oh hey, when I'm at the dinner table with my grandparents and my nieces and nephews, I act a little different. Like that's not bad. That's just normal. That's good. So, oh, when I'm at work and I'm talking to certain people, I shift gears. When I'm talking to the boss, I act in a slightly different way because you're calibrating. So if you do it there, start thinking about it. So you logically start tracking it. You become consciously competent about it. And then you can start applying it elsewhere. And then eventually, and this is what you guys are probably already doing, you're already unconsciously competent for levels of learning, unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence. You don't know what you don't know. Like you don't know shit and you don't know you don't know shit. Two, conscious incompetence. You know that you don't know shit. Third one is conscious, conscious incompetence. Third one's conscious competence. You know, and when you can think about it, you can perform the correct action. So think about learning to drive a car when you're 16 years old. Driving a car and you got to focus. You're looking for an address. Your friends are talking. You're like, guys, guys, shut up. Shh, shh. You turn down the radio. You got to really pay attention. That's because you need your conscious mind to handle it. And then as you become an adult and you're driving for hundreds of thousands of miles, well, now you're unconsciously competent. You can be driving the, on the freeway. You can be playing with your radio. You can be drinking a soda, have a soda between your legs. You'll be eating a burger as you're driving with one hand or your knee. And then something crazy is going up there and you go and swerve around it and don't get involved in a car accident while you're multitasking. Right. So again, it doesn't get easier. Driving a car is still driving a car. You just get better. So then it seems much easier. And so once you understand that, start applying it to other aspects of your life. And that's the same thing. Anytime you start becoming a, a new a student of something new, which I love. Like I love that, that feeling of, oh, I don't know anything. I get to completely level up. And I was just looking at some stuff this weekend for some classes to take. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm constantly leveling up. I just got some Coleman stuff. Like that's something I've been getting into and figuring out how to like maintain those and work on them and, and, and get them better. And a, I just wanted them anyways for like the, the prepping side and camping and stuff, but like understanding how they work and being able to repair it yourself and having a backup light source, like all that stuff. I think that's cool. So I'm learning like how that work. I've already, how they work. I've already like taken them apart and replaced the valve in one. I'm doing some other stuff with other ones and like always trying to level up. I'm working right now, like on a raspberry Pi with a cool little project I've been working on. I never took a computer class in my life. I barely graduated high school and I'm doing some stuff with that. So that's another example, constantly trying to get better and evolve. And when I pick those up or, my flipper zero, like, I don't know anything about coding. Very, 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 very little about coding. And uh, MySpace pages, my website, basic, base, super basic stuff, but nothing real. So now I'm playing with those things and I set it up and built my own video game emulator and, and other things I'm working on, a project that hopefully I'll, I'll announce real soon for these videos. But that's another example of just always trying to level up. So programming doesn't get easier. You just get better, so then it becomes easier, right? Keep up these videos, man. Good advice. It's hard to find, especially on YouTube with all the regurgitated BS floating around. Yeah, and a lot of the videos, too, when I see them, a lot of them aren't really, like, real. They're marketing videos, or they're just trying to get you to sign up, or they're throwing out scarcity and stuff. 
I never liked that. I don't like messing with that stuff. I just like wait. I, I never even thought of it this way, but one of my buddies was talking about it and he's like, no, no, what you do is you just give value. And I was like, oh yeah, that's just what I'm doing. I'm like, just, I'm just sharing because the stuff changed my life and I want to spread the gospel. And then he's like, oh yeah, you, you have a great marketing business strategy and, and how you do it's, I'd love to take credit for it. And maybe I'm unconsciously confident. Maybe I just figured it out. Uh, but he did like a breakdown of my stuff. And he's like, yeah, he's like, you don't even try to sell anything. You're just putting stuff out there. And that's what makes you different. And then people, oh, okay. Oh, I, didn't. I just think it's cheesy. Like when I go to a, a PUA seminar, I'd speak there. And then the dudes are on stage. And the last 10 minutes of their talk is, oh, well, normally this is $49.99. But right now, if you guys sign up, it's $19.99. Or it's the first month free. Anyone who does a boot camp right now and signs up, bring your wingman. I'll, I'll give it to you. Give them a free spot. And I was just like, oh, that's like 10 minutes of teaching you could have been doing. And to me, none of that stuff ever worked. Like, oh, scarcity, sign up now. If you call now, you get one, a second one for free. None of that worked. That always turned me off. So as soon as I saw guys on stage doing that, I was like, ugh, I don't want to deal with that at all. And I was like, all right, I'll just, I just look at it from like my perspective where if someone's up there and they're awesome, like, okay, I'm sold now. That's cool. I want to learn more from that person. But if they're trying to sell it to me, like that, that's a turnoff, which think about it, seduction, the guy's trying to convince you, the girl to have sex with them, it's a turnoff, right? So it's the same thing. Like you just let them realize how awesome you are. And if you build it, they will come. So that's one. And then the second thing that's real funny is he's like, oh yeah, when you do one-on-ones too, you make people hop through uh, a, a compliancy test and a yes ladder and, blah, and all these other things. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, the way you, you don't even give the pricing out for one-on-ones until people apply. And uh, he's like, yeah, and you do that for, and I was like, no, 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 that's not why I did that at all. It's because I was getting tons of emails from people. And then I would talk to them and I'd call them on the phone and we'd start getting into it. And then as soon as it came time to like sign up, they would, uh, they would flake out. And so I was like, man, I was wasting so much time doing it. So I was like, okay, well, if you guys want to do a one-on-one and I was just going to put it up for a little bit the the application page and uh it ended up filtering out all the guys who aren't serious about it because again it, like just like me if i'm serious about training martial arts with someone there's a website who are you what do you want to do what do you want to learn blah 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 what other training have you done like if i want to do it i'll jump through that hoop like it's not even a question it's not tricking me or it's not marketing to make me jump through it it was just if i'm sold i'm sold okay i'll, I'll spend two minutes and fill the stuff out like when you go to gun site the big gun school in Arizona, like you got to answer some questions. You got to jump through some hoops to actually go to one of the classes. And I was like, Oh, how do you want to go there? So yeah, I'm happy to jump through those as long as it's not too much. Right. And so I was like, no, no, I just, I put up that stuff just to filter out the people that weren't serious. And then now I don't waste my time as much. And then the guys who are serious now, when I call them, like we, we instantly 99% of the time we're talking and it's serious and it turns into something and that way I'm not wasting my time. And then the guy was like, oh, oh, I thought you were doing marketing. I'm like, no, I'm not that smart. I just did it to make make my life easier and uh, waste. I hate wasting my time. So I was wasting less of my time by doing it that way. Anyways, then I I, I did a lot of that stuff. And I think I stumbled upon uh, a good way of doing it. But I, I wasn't I wasn't like being sneaky or calculating or anything. I was just like, oh, this is just what I've liked when I've noticed other people have done, or I'm too busy right now for all this. Let me simplify my life. And then it turns out to be like a great thing. So I will say, I probably wouldn't have thought of that stuff years ago. So let's just assume I'm unconsciously confident in those areas. But anyways, that's why I like sharing the videos too, because even like that right there is an example. It's not just like a brag story about me. It's like, oh, here's something I went through. This is why I did it. This is what I learned. Now there's a lesson there. And you guys could take it. And it's the same thing with like my voicemail. I go, hey, this is Steven. If you, I have two numbers, but hey, this is Steven. Or, hey, this is Bravo. Um, the quickest and best way to get in touch with me is hang up and shoot me a text. But if you need to, leave me a message. And that's because I was getting tons of voicemail. I fucking hate voicemails. So I was like, all right, let me get rid of that. So years ago, I set that up. Like hang up now because that way it doesn't even leave me a uh, like a two second like dial tone sound as a voicemail. I was like, hang up now, shoot me a text message. That's the quickest and best way. So I'm helping them figure out the best way to get in contact with me. 
And uh, it just really simplified my life. So I think same thing here is same thing with dating. When I message girls, same thing with online dating. Same thing with my about me profile. That's where the do not contact me list came from. And then it worked really, 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 really well with girls who were on the do not contact me list. And then also girls that weren't on it. It worked great on both. So, so I think that is that. But yeah, I love sharing. I love helping. And then obviously, if guys want to sign up and do coaching, then it's a win-win because that's how I pay bills. They get better. I get better. And there's a reason there's not one negative review anywhere with any guy I've ever worked with. So, yeah, I like I like sharing and helping. And there's definitely more of these coming. So, all right, I think that's it. I'm going to bounce. And... Yeah, we got to go to like a family. So your whole life changes when you have a family. And it's great. And I don't, I don't miss stuff like I thought I would. I might. And I don't. The only thing I, I kind of miss is like your, your, your alone time, your freedom time, like for you. But I had a day like that yesterday where it was almost like the whole day to myself. And then I didn't feel that way. I was like, oh, I could play some video games. I could screw around a little bit. I can relax. And then it, it only took a couple hours, and then I was like, ah, I miss my family. And it wasn't like this super enjoyable thing. So I thought it was going to be like a, a grass is always greener. Well, it turned into like a grass is always greener thing where I was like, oh, being being alone, I can do whatever I want. But then back, same thing like when you're dating the girl, and you're like, oh, I wish I was single. And you're like back being single, and then you like don't have a choice. But then you had a girlfriend, so now there's obligations. And so it's grass is always greener. And so you just go through a few of those examples of that and then you realize like oh the grass isn't greener and that x that you're remembering from years ago isn't that great because you're just remembering like five great things not the hundred bad things and so it's just kind of like that that whole thought process and then that also just goes into like why are you living in the past um why are you building up like an inaccurate view of the past because there could have been a girl you dated where things really didn't work out well, but it was a lot of fun. And so then like a couple years later, you're thinking about, oh, that girl was so much fun. It was so great. And forgetting all the all the suck from it. Except for a little of the suck, maybe. So that's probably been, I'll end on this, one of the things that's been the most important, helpful lessons in my entire life is gratitude and living in the now, living in the present. And then what ifing positives for the future. I was the king of what ifing negatives. It's still kind of like my default. Like you get, you get a call from someone you haven't heard from in a while. You know, oh my God, what happened? Is everything okay? Thinking like someone died or something. It's, oh no, your friend's just trying to catch up or they're coming through town and they want to see you. But like your gut is like a negative. So I still struggle with that a lot. That like my default response almost all the time it feels like is negatives i don't know where that originally came from that could be a whole other talk but taking a moment to realize like oh wait that's usually not what happens why am i what if negatives why don't i what if a positive and then start making yourself do that and eventually that becomes a lot more of your default to where like now i get a negative thought from something and it like quickly passes it's a micro thought and quickly replaced with a positive. Or what's even better is a lot of times now it's it's just a positive. Oh, I haven't heard from so-and-so so long. Like, assume something good. Like, oh, cool, I'll call him back in a minute. So that and living in the present. So you can what if positives in the future, living in the present, and quickly visiting the past. But like reality, not just the the, the good parts from something and then forgetting all the, the real lessons you learned. So you can visit the past, you can visit the future, but living in the present and then gratitude and trying to be positive. Like I'm not Mr. Woo Woo guy. I'm not Mr. Hippie guy. You start doing that. It's crazy how much that transforms your life. And then when you start becoming a more positive, happier, better person, you're more calibrated like then dealing and interacting with everyone becomes a better thing. And then people want to be around you. People like being around you. People have fun around you. People 
enjoy being around you. People feel safe around you. People know they're going to have a good time around you. People know, you know, cool spots to go to and you're going to just always bring like good energy. And now you start becoming someone that other people want to be around. And then the balancing act of that is like, I'm an introvert and I'm, 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 I'm pretty happy being solo for the most part, but then it's like too many people start coming there. So then you start being picky with who you spend your time with. And then that's a whole other learning lesson, which is pretty cool because now I'm very, very blessed to have some really high level people in my life. And uh, wasn't like that years ago. So, all right. I said, I'm going to bounce like multiple times. I'm going to do it. Thanks for coming in guys. Hope this helped. And uh, I'll, I'll be doing more posts. This one, I just did like a quick one hour heads up, but I'll be doing more longer heads up on my Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, social media, and then doing more of these during the day. And I think eventually very quickly have like a set schedule. So you guys can kind of like set an alarm or whatever, if you want to come in here. So thanks for coming. Have a great weekend guys.